Fuck it. All right, I'm going to hit the button right now. Okay, go. Hope you're, hope you're ready. Go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Fast Charging with B&B podcast, episode 40. I'm Brian. And I'm Bear with the late start on the <laughs> go live button. Yeah. Oh, mm. to totally didn't nail that. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus here on quality. Sometimes low quality. It still counts. It's got quality right in the name. Yeah, there's two types of luck. There's good luck and there's bad luck. So I wish everyone luck. <laughs> yeah, so we've got uh, a couple news stories today, I think. But I'm not positive. It's tough to say for sure. Yes, we got quite a few things going on, including um, some breaking. Me, me, no, nah, including me trying to work like a side angle here. Mm -hmm. um, He's got a side <laughs> hustle going on. Apparently, I got a side hustle, and it's interfering. Apparently, paying uh, the bills is a thing that uh, that his wife uh, encourages him to do. So yeah. So when you have a side hustle like Toro, and you've got cars coming out of your Wahoo. Um, sometimes they interrupt with uh, things like very important live streams. Mm. So, uh, so I'm going to critique Polestar right now because I'm trying to unlock a Polestar that's 35 miles from me for a Turo client. And right before uh, Brian and I were talking, right two minutes before, we're like, oh, good, the guy messaged me. Now I can unlock the car. And I sent the request, and the app did not work, even though it said that it did, and the customer got to the car. So. The Polestar app, this is EV Talk. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's very generic. If you are a Tesla person, you know that the app looks a whole lot different. This It's a very simple app. Uh, and it, it looks like, you know what happened? I don't think the guy found the car. Um, but maybe that's the problem. It may have relocked itself. Maybe, And that would be actually a good... Good thing. I got tons of information from Polestars and from the Hyundai Ionic 5 about the good and the bad. And one day, I could, uh, I'll sit with you, Brian, and tell you why they suck. <laughs> <laughs> and why, and there's a lot of things I hate about these two cars, but there's a lot of things I do love. And I, I think it's in everyone's best interest to like look at both, all these cars and see what's good and what's bad. Um, but there are definitely some good things. So we should talk about some good news. Is there any good news this week? Yeah, there is. There is a. I think the Polestar thing is good news. Um, and this guy is still texting me. Wow, this is this is horrible. He's looking at the wrong car. Uh, end of the row. <laughs> <laughs> he sends me a picture of a different car. No, that's not a Polestar. That's a GMC. So no, I don't really think there was good news except for the Polestar app works so great. Uh, other than that, I think we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. show, Bear. I appreciate you hanging out with me for four minutes, uh, two and a half minutes. Yeah. You All know right. what? We should probably Let's talk, talk about Nikola. Oh, never heard of them. Share so Nikola is yeah. a startup company <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be making uh, electric semis. Yeah. And they just passed the proposal that they've been trying to pass for several months. And this is to dilute the shares, but this is something that every shareholder that has been paying attention, not asking silly questions like, will there be dividends anytime soon? But if you've been paying attention, you know that Nikola was going to do this, and they said so quite a long time ago. So they finally got this passed. 200 million more shares are allowed to be issued. And the important thing is, this doesn't mean they're going to issue them tomorrow. It doesn't mean that when they issue them, they will all be issued at once. This means they have a bit of insurance. Yes. And this will give them uh, the ability to raise capital. And this will, um, this will happen at, the, at their leisure whenever they can do it. And they don't, like if the stock goes up to $12, they could go, okay, we're going to issue, let's say, a million shares. Right. Yeah, they can do it. However they, however they want, um, and this gives them, you know, there was a lot of talk, oh, well, they're, with, their, with their cash burn rate, they've only got until, you know, Q2 of 23 or, or whatever. This changes that a little bit. 
Yes. And that's all the Nicola news we had, unfortunately. Yeah, there was nothing else, but nothing else. Uh, except for this t- tiny little thing that oh, happened. Oh, what's that? Uh, they purchased another company, like what? out of nowhere. I didn't see this coming myself. They, uh, uh, they're working on their vertical integration, and they have acquired Romeo Power, who was making their battery packs. And if you have been paying attention to Nikola, and I know you haven't, Brian, because you just heard about them right. about 10 minutes, five minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Nikola um, said that the one thing that the, the one thing that they're short of uh, is battery packs, uh, and getting the supplier to make enough of them. So Romeo Power creates these battery packs, and by purchasing them, they believe that they are going to be able to save three hundred and fifty million dollars a year within a few years because they're not paying someone else to do it and they're not trying to uh, outsource to other places. And they're not trying to uh, reinvent it. Right. Uh, uh, actually, this particular article says the acquisition could save up to $350 million over the next four years. I read other articles that said $350 million a year. Just depends on or the volume. By, or by 2025. So yeah, just depends on the volume. And, yes. Uh, but, uh, but buying a company, how can they afford it? Where do they have the cash? Well, no cash. They purchase it with stock All that stock. they previously had hiding in their pocket. Stock that they have not issued yet, uh, which they had some in their pocket, basically. Right, they had ready. some left. Mm-hmm. They weren't dying for cash that badly, but the the Proposal 2... You know what the best part about Proposal 2 is? No. Is that it dilutes Trevor Milton's shares also. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And... Nicholas appears committed to succeed despite Trevor's involvement. Yes. So yes. I, I, I think I think they're on a good path. Uh earnings call is on Thursday and excited for that. I'm gonna be live streaming that. And that will be good times. I, I'm thinking we're gonna hear some good stuff. Uh well, then really- what I will do is I will uh live stream a reaction to your stream, just mocking it. <laughs> Okay. All right. You can do that. <laughs> that I, would I, be I, funny. That I hope funny. all the questions get answered. And, and I would just crop out the, the, the official part so it's just you and me just reacting to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Uh, JJ says, Nicola making their own battery packs now. Are we Tesla enough for you, Daddy Brian? On, on mine, he just said, Nicola news first, question mark, exclamation. I'm telling you, JJ, when there's news, we report it. When there's breaking news, we break it. So, yes. Yeah. Um, and and it, are, it, are you Tesla enough for me? I, is it about me? I don't think it's about me. No, I always thought it was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. All right. Uh, so l- let's move on because I don't want this to get to JJ's head. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. Uh, Jay Leno. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he's got a new video out on the Cadillac Lyric. Yeah. He, he seems to like it. He, I, I wouldn't say that he was like super enthusiastic, like this is the greatest thing ever. Uh, but he did go over a lot of features in the car. He had someone from, from Cadillac there. Uh, and the car seemed a little bit better than I was expecting. And it's got one thing that I noticed that stood out to me that uh, Tesla's need. What's that? Uh, well, it's got the full glass roof, but it also has a sunshade for mm. the entire roof. Mm. And that would really be something that's awesome. Uh, my cars get so hot in the middle of the summer here. Uh, we're talking over 150 degrees because the app, the great app, which is much better than the Polestar one, uh, will tell you the interior temperature of your car, and it's been over 150 degrees in that car. Wow. Wow. So I'm. Um, you can cook an egg, but you can also cook your ass when you sit down. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to impress Jay with a car. Oh, yeah. God, jeez. He's got... He's yeah. probably had every car yeah. uh, that anybody would desire. Yeah. And he, he he's just got so much knowledge on all these different cars and different things. So there's, 
give them something and have them be like super excited you know that's going to be hard to do but to have them just like yeah this is good i like this i'm surprised with this i like this feature you know i wouldn't be surprised if they give him a celestique i don't know they don't make that <laughs> they're not going to make that many no but i don't but, think they're going to sell as many as they could make it's too expensive yeah yes so what other new cars are out there as far as I know, none. None. The Ionic yeah, gonna... 6 looks like it might be uh, heading out pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we talked about this like in a uh, previous episode. Uh, this video's got some more details on it, more information, so if you're interested in that, <laughs> uh, I'm sure this will be down in the, in the links of our, our description, and I'll have more information. It looks like Hyundai is continuing with their digital dot matrix uh thing that they're doing like they they did in the in the five they're going to do it in the six also i think it's a cool theme but i don't understand where it comes from is it like supposed to be digital because it's an electric car or is it just a theme that they like i don't know what yeah do you, that's what do you a think? tough question i think i think it's part of the theme i think they want something that sets it apart because for a long time people said how come electric cars have to look so weird the answer is they didn't it's just you only noticed them when they were it's true yeah it's true. there were plenty of electric cars that you just didn't know were electric having the problem of his tesla getting too hot that is absolutely true i would yeah i would love to be able to complain about that yes but well, i'm just i'm sorry i'm One just day. a poor boy yes so um here's my next car is coming up next. Mm -hmm. shall, shall we take a look at oh, this? Yeah. yeah, this is absolutely what you're getting into. Yeah, this is going to happen uh, right after Never. Mm -hmm. So, uh, awesome car. Awesome looking car. I don't know if it's actually an awesome car. The reviews I've what seen, you... the hands-on ride and drives, are uh, very, very favorable. It is... Yes. It is... No, no compromises. Yes, I I've only seen good things on, on videos of this, and I think it, I think it's kind of a definitely a neat looking car. My only concern with that, not that I'm ever going to get in one, is that I might be able to get a leg in, and uh, if you know a couple of people squeezed me in, giving me a little bit of a push, I don't know how I'd ever get out without. Oh. Um, assistance no i i do it's very easy you open the door you lay down on the pavement and you snake out <laughs> i snake out mm -hmm. uh i've already done that with other cars that i've gotten in into it it's it gets kind of embarrassing yeah you know you, you look like a guy who's having some sort of middle age crisis and you get a corvette and then then people are watching you crawl out of it like in the parking lot at the at at the physical therapist and you're, you're crawling out and you just look really, it's a bad look. Yeah. The car is beautiful. The performance looks good. And from this video, it looks like they're actually getting to volume. Um, yes. Who owns them again? Uh, that, it, you know, I'm just like confused because I think they own Bugatti now. Yeah. It looks like they bought... Bugatti from Volkswagen at the same time Porsche gave them 500 million? Yeah, so it gets a little confusing about who owns what. Um, I didn't spend that time, that much time looking it, in it, but uh, it, it, they've got, I don't know where they came up with 500 or they got the 500 million from Porsche and then what they do? They went and bought Bugatti with that money? <laughs> it sounds like it. It sounds like it. It's a pretty interesting accounting game. Is that is that how you show profits these days? I don't know. But I don't. But I'll, I'll tell you what. If there's a car company out there that wants to give me five hundred million dollars so I could go buy uh, like Lamborghini, I, I'm I'm down with that. So mm -hmm. I don't know how that deal worked out, but it it somehow did. So yeah, yeah. Any. Uh... Hey, hey, wait a minute. I, I'm going to interrupt our flow because this right. kind of looks funny. Um, are you looking at the CNN business page of Electric Supercar Maker Remac? Is that the one you're looking yes. at? Okay, so I got four videos that are down at the bottom. 
And the fourth one says review. The electric Toyota Buzz Forks is perfectly fine. <laughs> you see? Do you see that one? I do one? see that. Okay, we'll save that for a couple minutes from now. Ah, so good. So good. So Volkswagen uh, has begun um, assembly in Chattanooga for their ID4. Yeah, they are. Do you know that was even coming? Like, um, I, yeah, we probably talked about it. Um, but I, I heard something that, about that. They were going to be created. They're going to be building the cars here in the U.S., which, uh, per our later conversation about EV tax credits, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. To, if you can move your manufacturing over to the U.S., because it looks like we actually have some real, uh, incentives to produce your cars in the United States or yeah. North America. But uh, yes. I I think they said in this article we're looking probably about October before we start seeing cars uh, delivered from yeah. this factory. And ramping to 7,000 a week in Q4 with the goal to further increase output next year should be good. Uh, that is a decent amount of cars. Yeah. Though we have reported in the past that um, they are their sales of the ID4 are dropping, aren't they? Yes, but they're still selling every unit they make, so. And maybe that's the problem then. And maybe that's the problem. Let's get more units out there. Yeah, let's get more units of the Chevy Bolt. <laughs> it's best value in America by far. Uh, and I would agree with that. Uh, yeah, especially but... with the tax rebate coming back. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's... but. But saying something is the best value doesn't necessarily mean that that's a good thing. Because ramen noodles are the best value for dinner. Lentils. You're, yeah. You're going to spend 40 cents and you've had a, a meal. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you had a good meal? No. It means you had the best value meal in the dorm. Right, right. And just like when you order off the value menu at McDonald's, it doesn't mean you're having the best thing on McDonald's. But... Well, I don't know what the best thing would be on McDonald's, but it, best value doesn't mean you're getting the best. No. But, uh, you know, at least they've got things sorted out with the Bolt. Oh, yeah, as long as you don't have a, another problem with it. So the Chevy Bolt has a $6,000 rebate with conditions? So what it is, is if you bought the Bolt earlier this year before the price drop, they'll come back and say, hey, do you want that $6,000 back? We will give it to you. Oh, oh, but one thing real quick. I need you to sign this hold harmless that you won't sue us when, uh, uh, sorry, if your bolt goes en fuego. <laughs> now, if they actually fix the problem, the chances of the uh, card catching on fire is pretty slim. It was always pretty slim. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true too. But still, that it, it's kind of shady to try and like uh take the power out of the consumer like that almost seems like a strong arming but gm wouldn't do anything like that would they no 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 they they are all about you having the right to do whatever you want with your car like but, if i bought a hummer could i resell it no 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 not that not that <laughs> that's our car <laughs> yeah yeah, GM doesn't people want buying its newest, most sought-after models, like the Hummer EV, to flip them. But we yeah, can't stop you, know, you, so what we'll do is uh, kind of diminish the usefulness and value of your warranty. Flip, by all means, please flip it, then we're off the hook. <laughs> yeah. No problem now. That actually would definitely save them money. Oh, uh, they, they would probably be very happy if, if people were to do that after after within 12 months if you flip it within 12 months the warranty is going to be probably void uh, but they're also going to be doing that with the Escalade and the Chevy Corvette so um, I don't know if that would survive a legal challenge <sighs> yeah. well it, it, there's a lot of warranties out there that say you must be the original owner hmm. for, Interesting. for a lot of things Interesting. So, a lot of times, uh, warranties do not transfer over with oh. certain things. You know what? Now that you mention it, I remember seeing that there was something I bought from Costco, and it said on it, and this is probably 20 years ago, 
because we're not an authorized reseller, the warranty, there is no warranty on this product, but you can just return it to us. Okay. Well, Costco takes everything back. Uh, yeah. That's what I've heard. I've never returned anything at Costco, but I've got friends that like have a, a weekly routine where they return like the, the mattress that they bought eight years ago. And this, this mattress is no good. Wow. So, yeah, uh, I know. It's true. It's, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> Just shut it off like mm -hmm. GM did with the Hummer. So what was it you were saying earlier about the uh, Toyota Buzz Forks? It's fine, what right? A, yeah, that, that's what that, that video said. The Toyota Buzz Forks is fine. It's fine. And that was, a, that was a review. So what in the holy hell is going on with this car? Well, Toyota's all, you know, Toyota loves them so much, they'll buy them back from you. We just we, and, we just want to have a big collection of them. Okay, so you brought this article up. I saw an article yesterday that said uh, Toyota was offering people five thousand uh, dollars if they have purchased one of these Buzz Forks and they are not to they should not be driving these cars until they can get some sort of recall fixed, which they may not have a recall for yet. But they will give you five. I've never heard of a company giving you $5,000 to park your car. I don't think GM even did that with the Bolt. They just said, let it burn. Yeah. Don't park, but don't park it in your house. Right. Uh, so what's going on with this car? So down lower on the article, there's bullet points. The $5,000 towards payment on your loan or lease or purchase price. Uh, if, you paid it, if you paid it in full, they'll give you five grand. Uh, otherwise, they'll cover your payments up to 5000 and please, uh, prov uh, we provide additional time for complimentary charging at EVgo. So if you got, you know, six months of free charging, they'll extend it. Right. And they'll extend the warranty for however long it's out of commission. So they're just saying, just park it and uh, just park it. But, you know, wow. yeah, the best wheels are no wheels. Yeah, that's one one way to save money on, on fueling it up. Maintenance costs are going to be real low if you don't use yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Replacement cost, a bit higher, but, you know, it's a trade-off. Well, i um, just going to go with, uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yes, as, the, as the article said, it's fine. <laughs> that, you know when, when your wife says things are fine? It's what's, not fine. What's wrong, honey? Are you, are you mad? I'm fine. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. great. Well, then let's move on. So when you see a review that says the car is just fine, yeah, that may have been written by your wife. Oh dear. <laughs> just saying, just saying. So who else is having problems? Well, apparently Porsche is recalling forty thousand Taycans. A global recall is related to the wiring harness of the drivers and passengers' seats. Does it make it like just go forward and smash your face into the dashboard, or? Well, there is a risk that airbags and seatbelt tensioners could be deactivated, which is a Ooh. safety issue. It is definitely a safety issue. Yeah. That doesn't doesn't sound like an over-the-air update on that one. No. No. Well, that's too bad. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it is too bad. And honestly, I'm a little surprised. But again, these are not imminent risks. These are outside possibilities which is sufficient because a recall cars get recalls all the time yes they do and i think tesla just had a a recall where the uh cars actually have to go in it was not an over-the-air update yeah paul wants i don't remember to know what it was for but if that's a hot wheels buzz forks on the wall behind you <laughs> no that's a lucid that's a lucid that air. is a lucid air that is going to be given away to someone that can guess uh, either Nicola's production. Yep, Brian's got one too. <laughs> I, I've got nine or ten of them. Um, I'm giving away uh, a Lucid Air. I'm going to mail to a viewer that guesses the correct production and delivery numbers for Lucid or the closest and for Nicola. What, what's that one? The Roadster. Oh, the Roadster. Yeah. Should have sent you that instead. Well, I don't have a roadster. <laughs> mm. Another car I can't fit into. Uh huh. Uh huh. I feel like it's like height discrimination when they build these tiny cars that I really think are cool looking. So, uh, who, uh, 
Who can afford an EV anyway? Uh, more people now. Really? That's the rumor. Yeah, it looks like uh, the EV subsidies may be coming back and in ways that are more targeted and uh, more generous. Uh, one of the complaints I've always had about the re is, uh, about the tax rebate is that you only qualify for it if you already pay over 7500 a year in federal income taxes, which a lot of people don't. Yes, and that, that meant that only people with a lot of money uh, would benefit from it. Uh, that was a non-refundable tax credit, which is what it was called. Now it is a refundable tax credit, which you can even get at the time of purchase. Uh, there's a lot of things that you, you said that this makes it a lot more accessible to people. It also makes it much more complicated. They have definitely complicated this, uh, but I don't think it's all that bad as far as a complication. I think the intended consequences, and I'm not sure it's going to come to this, I think the intended consequences is to get vehicles made in the United States and North America uh, to use resources from the United States or from countries that we don't hate and we have free trade agreements with. By the way, do you know how many countries have free trade agreements with the United States? Well, uh, no. The list I saw had only about 20 countries on it, 15 or 20. That, it is 20. It okay. is 20. So there's only 20 countries that we can uh, source uh, the minerals for that you need for the batteries. And uh, the countries on there were not uh, exactly known for having a lot of these minerals. Uh, there might be a few. I didn't go too deep into that rabbit hole trying to figure out. Chile's um, on the list. Yeah. That's uh, but th there, yeah, there are some countries that are not going to be helpful as far as this goes. So I, I think that's good because uh, we can develop more mining in places in North America, uh, which if it's locally sourced, you know that uh, it's coming from a good source, not being uh, child labor or any of those crappy rumors that have floated out in the past. And also, if you have to move 50 tons of lithium, it's going to be a lot cheaper if you just need to put it on a rail cart to move it across the country to wherever it needs to go. So a lot of the caveats on there is as each year goes by, the vehicles need to have a higher percentage of these minerals. Uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to track. And there's going to be one company, I'm not saying Volkswagen would do this, that is going to say, yeah, 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 we got all this from the United States. We're good. We're good. Just we'll sign for that. And then like 10 years later, they're going to find out that it was some slave children in uh, Zimbabwe or something that uh, got the cobalt out of the ground. And they'll have to deal with a big fine at a later time. So we're hoping that doesn't happen. So the big things on this that are unique, it also includes used vehicles. Um, and it includes... For the first time, uh, caps on how much the car can cost, which will limit some companies and limit some models. Uh, and, um, and yeah, it's based on percentages. So if you're getting your batteries from China, um, that's going to reduce the total uh, subsidy available to you, the total tax rebate. And yeah, if the car is not even made in the US, it may not, or in North America, because Based on our trade agreements with Canada and Mexico, we have to include them. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, but there's a so there is a lot of cars that are uh, who are covered today that will not be covered next year. Uh, mm -hmm. If you've if you've ordered a car from one of these manufacturers, it will grandfather over, and you could use the seventy five hundred non refundable tax credit. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those companies would be Lucid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if you ordered a Lucid Air. Uh, it will no longer be eligible if you take uh, if you order after order in get the delivery after the first of the year if this gets passed remember this is all if it gets passed the model s the model x no longer or they still won't qualify for anything uh, the buzz forks uh, would not qualify because they are not assembled in north america uh, the rivian might just put itself out of the running based on how they're going to use the, um, are they going to use MSRP of the base model or are they going to take the actual final cost of the vehicle? I with assume options? they would take the final cost with options. It's that's not necessarily the truth. 
they may just take the base price of a model. Hmm. And if they do, uh, then the Rivians are okay at their current price. If they don't, if they take it with options, you will have a Model Y with full self-driving and get disqualified because they will go over the 80,000, which an SUV is set at. Uh, so the Lucid Air, uh, their entry level is 70, or actually that's gone up. I'm not even sure where it's at, but it's a sedan. Sedans need to be 55,000. SUVs are 80,000. The Hummer won't qualify for anything. Uh, you won't even get a, a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, the new ID4s will, the ones that are being made in the Carolinas, so they'll still be around, uh, but there's a lot of cars that are just going to get kicked off. So, But Polestar is also opening up a factory in... I don't the, know. The, in, in the southern states. One of the southern states is going to have them. Hmm. So... They need to obviously get that out because these things are going to make a difference of whether, you know, people are looking at these cars. So some of these manufacturers stand to lose. Lucid stands to lose. Rivian could possibly lose. Um, and there's other manufacturers that we've talked about, like uh, Toyota. Most of their vehicles are not made here. They stand to lose. So it could be a bad thing for uh, some of them, but it's going to encourage production of uh, vehicles in the United States, which is obviously good for us Americans. And like you were saying earlier, like uh, John pointed out, Polestar's plant is in South Carolina. These, the big companies already have plants here. This will encourage them to build more here. And that's, I think, fantastic. Uh, did you see about Canada's new luxury sales uh, goods tax? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they're they doing the opposite of trying to encourage people to buy things. Um, yeah, so how much are they adding? 20% of the value if a car is over $100,000? I And I believe it's 20% um, above the 100000 mark. So if you bought an S or X in Canada this year, you may be on the hook for an additional tax you didn't know was going to be there. There is a way around this. What's that? Uh, I'm, I met a Canadian this weekend who was telling me that a Model X in Canada would cost him like $190,000 a Canadian. I don't know what that converts to because I'm ignorant on other people's currencies. But I was like, wow, why? He's like, oh, there's just taxes and stuff like that. And he said, I can get around it if I buy the car and I leave it in the United States at... Because he had a he has a house here in Arizona, if he left it here for six months, then he could go ahead and bring the car into Canada, plate it, and he would be fine going forward in the future. Hmm. But he would have to leave the car here in the United States for six oh, months. Oh, oh wait, there was a one other caveat, and this is this is the the easy workaround. It has to be in the United States for six months, or have six thousand I think it was six thousand kilometers on it when he brings it to Canada. So I'm like, so you just drive up there, right? And then you're there, eh? And he's like, eh. <laughs> so that's how you can actually get, get around some of these. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, MD right. Hofsey points out 190,000 Canadian would be 152,000 US. Okay. Yeah. And that probably includes some of the tax that was already there because they already had a luxury tax, didn't they? I don't know. I don't know. Someone from Canada, please tell us. Yeah. Yeah, so that's um, so that's great. In terms of uh, the EV credit, that's probably all we need to say because you were saying that some companies are priced out. Yeah, and uh, we did have an article. Rivian's not happy to be left out of the new EV tax credit. Yeah, uh, they they could always lower their prices. Apparently, that shouldn't be a problem for them. Well, and the problem is the eighty thousand dollar limit for a truck. Wasn't that what they originally were targeting for their for their sale price? Yeah. You know what? I went online to look at uh, the Rivian because you used to be able to custom build and, and kind of get a price of what it would cost. You can't do that anymore. So I'm just like, I know that they raised prices uh, a month or two ago, but I, I, couldn't, I could not build a Rivian R1T or R1S. It just had a link to go, all right, reserve yours. 
And I'm like, no, I want to find out how much all the options cost. And I'm just kind of curious. And they're like, no, just give us your $1,000 deposit. Well, well we don't like, know how much it costs. We're finally yeah. willing to be honest about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think uh, there's any trouble at Rivian, right? No, no. Uh, there's no trouble except for 840 people. Now, if you're one of the 840 people that work at Rivian who are now out of a job, uh, you know, hopefully you got some good EV experience and um, you'll probably be able to find a job somewhere else. But they are laying off 840 employees and uh, it's not supposed to be happening at the manufacturing uh, facilities. But uh, I'm not sure what types of jobs are are being lost. Do you have yeah. any idea? No, it, my guess would be, and I feel like we might have talked about this before, redundant stuff. Do you really need, um, you know, six people in PR when you can get by with two or three? Things like that. But 6% is a pretty deep cut. They got to get their, they got to get their cash burn under control because it is problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I wish them the best. And I mean the employees who yeah. are n not employees anymore. Well, yes. And like you said, I'm sure they will be fine. The job market is sufficiently tight that someone coming out of a place like that will not likely have much trouble finding other work. And that, I believe, to be a fact, they, if they want to keep working, they should be able to get something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have no segue, do we? No, I think no segue on this one. Electric cars don't need better batteries. America needs better charging networks. That's something that's holding it back. And, yeah. you know, you can speak to this better than I can, but all the videos I've seen of road trips dealing with EVgo and Electrify America feel incredibly frustrating. Okay. I will say I had my third trip to Electrify America in the past week, and this was my first stop without having to call them, which is great. It was a 350 kilowatt charger. That was great, too. Uh, so... Everything went very smoothly that time. Uh, it did not go smoothly for the guy who pulled up next to me, who was in a Tesla, uh, who was renting it, and said, what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, uh, look for an adapter or keep driving because you're not charging here. So he, he didn't know that he wasn't supposed to be there because of the different charging cables. Yes, we need a standard. I don't care who wins. Just let somebody win. Yeah. And, and let's move on so that we don't have like different gas pumps for different cars. Right. As that yeah, is, if I want to put diesel bonus. in my unleaded vehicle, I should be able to. Right. Right. <laughs> it's electricity. It's the same thing. Well, there's AC and DC bear. They don't intersect. No, they can. <laughs> All right. I yeah. That was a good one, man. This on, on that, uh, on that article, there's a picture of that Mercedes EQS. Wow, what a turd. <laughs> hate it so much. I think the inside of that car is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But on the outside? Ooh, boy. Uh, I don't know. It looks like a, a whale's penis or something. I'm not sure what it... <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's probably accurate. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, we have a new charging station that was put in. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure of the location, but uh, we just I I came across this and I wanted to share it. I thought this was kind of cool. This is a, a charging station, an EV charging station from 1917, and it looks like it's working better than most Electrify America stations. <laughs> they they've got at least eight vehicles plugged in there, so. Uh, and I wonder, I wonder how many kilowatts that's going off. Oh, very few, I would imagine. Yeah, very but few. But also the range on these didn't have to be, you know, this is, I'm guessing, like Manhattan or Chicago, where 10 miles of range would probably be enough to do your route. Yeah, to, well, it all depends on what you're doing, I guess. Um, I, I didn't really look through it. I just got awestruck by the picture. I was like, we're using this picture today. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know where the picture is actually from. Um, but I think it was kind of cool. Yeah. And it's interesting. The power lines are built into the, into the brick ground. Yeah. The, the cobblestone brick ground. That, yeah. Cause 
that was pre-concrete, wasn't it? No, no, can't be, can't be. No, concrete yeah. goes back to the ancient Romans. Right, but mass use of it, uh, sure. of maybe. maybe cement. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that is a very cool picture, though. Yeah. Um, so speaking of electric grids. Yeah. So this one annoyed me. Uh, not last week, but the week before I did this uh, live. My Friday show was about how there are so many moneyed interests who are against all things Elon because he is disrupting so many industries. And I did get a little bit of pushback on it saying, you know, you're in conspiracy theory zone. We're not. This is known. Leaked. U.S. power companies secretly spending millions to protect profits and fight clean energy. So these guys have this uh, PR firm and they're having uh, some problems between the partners. And in the course of it, all this stuff came out because they'd rather attack each other than keep their secrets. Yeah, whenever, whenever green initiatives happen, money flows in saying, quick, go buy some politicians, go hurt some politicians. Um, <clears throat> that candidate later admitted he was bribed to run. They will do anything. Yeah. To protect their moneyed interest because if they spend a few hundred thousand or a few million or a few tens of millions it's worth it to protect these trillion dollar industries yeah uh this is a pretty horrible story uh just reeks of corruption and they'll probably get away with it i hate lobbyists i think lobbyists are very similar in my eyes to uh car dealerships yeah yeah they're just really not good people. No. Self serving. No. Will yeah. sacrifice everybody to make a buck. Yeah. Yeah. The idea behind it was good. Allow people from underrepresented interests to get the attention of lawmakers to pass some law that that is good for everyone but but might not have widespread support, but it was instantly converted into what it is today. Which is they all work for companies and businesses that are, that I don't think they should have lobbyists because they don't have a vote. You can't vote as a company. Right. Uh, you're not a citizen. You should not have a right to influence politicians in any way. So I don't believe that politicians should be taking mo money, gifts, uh, their family members, anything from any business because as a business, you know, if you're publicly owned, you've got your stockholders. They can vote any way they want uh, for a politician or not. If otherwise, you are you are just one entity. Yeah. But with a ten million dollars, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of you know enough uh, politics for my tastes. Is that enough? It is. Uh, All right. Have you seen? The best-selling EV models in China. At number yeah, I've one seen. <laughs> is that Model uh, 3. And at number three is the Model Y. With that $5,000 yeah. death box at number two. That number two, I, I, I know it's transportation technically, but is it really a car? It goes highway speed. What's, how quick does it really go? 60 mi 62 miles an hour. Not U.S. highway. Uh, does it have airbags? No. No, right. No. So. You will not sell these. You could sell them outside of China, but only to countries with lower safety standards than China. And I'm sure there are some, but that those are not... I, that's just a death trap. It it's really a death is. Trap. More it, importantly, the marg the price of this car, five thousand, is a number smaller than the margin on the three and Y. That's uh So if Tesla ever runs into a demand problem, they could still profitably have a buy one get one where you buy a model three and you get a Wu Ling to go. Yeah, or or they can start removing airbags. Oh sweet gentle Christ. The exciting news I'm, on here isn't positions one, two, and three, but all these other guys starting to get in. BYD Song, the uh, Chang'an Benny. These are decent-looking cars. I don't 
approve of having BYD's plug-in hybrid on here, but a lot of these are pure EVs. Uh, speaking of plug-in, did you see the uh, recent article, or or I don't know where I heard this, about the uh, plug-in hybrid, their efficiency is actually twice as bad as been previously reported because most people who buy a plug-in hybrid don't plug it in? Don't, yes. Yeah, I... Mm, I believe that. I don't think I saw that, but that makes absolute sense. If you're not, if you're not using it the way it was tested in the lab, you're going to get different results. Yeah, and plugging it in is a completely optional thing. Mm -hmm. Where usually, if you bought it, took the tax break because it's a plug-in, and never plugged it in. Right. You're obviously going to have different results. And now you've got a, a very small, not terribly efficient electric uh, gas engine hauling around battery weight mm -hmm. yes yeah that's not ideal that's but not that's ideal. what's happening i did want to say thanks to mark for the super chat and chandra das in the chat with the super chat 420 nice uh had uh commented yesterday about this new thing called energy dome it's just a big uh, bag of co2 that you could use as a low cost uh, pressure, air pressure battery. So, quick shout out for that. I haven't had a chance to look into it too deeply, but thank you guys for the super chats. Yeah, that, that's going to be produced right next to the Nicola Badger. <laughs> uh huh. Maybe, maybe. So, did you know that there's a version of Bolt that doesn't catch on fire? <laughs> that's a good segue. <laughs> that's a good one. So there's a company Is called it? Bolt Mobility. Apparently they have vanished, leaving e-bikes, unanswered calls, behind in several U.S. cities. Does that mean we could pick up free bikes anywhere we want? Technically still illegal. I don't know who would file the report. And did you know this, was, this company was co-founded by Usain Bolt? That is apparently true. I absolutely did not. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> I I assumed that was a joke until I saw it. Yeah, not a not a very funny one. No. Because I, I could have easily gone with a Chevy Bolt joke mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. But you already did, which was actually <laughs> a good one. <laughs> it's a shame. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't have invested in something like this because I don't understand it well enough. But I have I, the, I've seen these bikes and these scooters, and I, I still don't understand how they just don't get t stolen and torn apart and then reassembled without the tracking in it. I just don't know how that somehow works. Right. And I'm, su I'm sure there's a way, but it just... I, I also would probably get on a scooter and promptly fall and break a hip. So oh, I don't think it's meant for people of our uh, well, these are bicycles. Of our age. Yeah, but I, it's the whole concept of it. The same thing with the bicycle. I, you know, I don't know how far I'd go before I, I drive into something. Mm, mm. It's it. It's not for old people. Mm. Yes. There's a whole balance thing. Look at you, you, even our president can't stay on a bike without falling off. I'm I'm close to that age. I, I, I would just like tip over. It can happen. Increasingly, it feels like the world isn't made for people my age. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, so we've got one more, and it's a good one. Why don't yeah. You, uh, why don't you tell us about this? Mr. Monroe has another video out, and um, it was actually a really good video. Where he was getting, uh, Sandy Monroe was getting his F-150 delivered to him. And who's going to deliver your F-150? Well, Jim Farley. And, uh, you know, that's kind of cool to get the CEO to deliver um, your truck. So he got, uh, he got the truck and he got an interview. And uh, he got a decent in interview. There was also some other people there. Chief Engineer Linda uh, Zhang, Hang, I'm not don't want to miss I don't know which letter is supposed to be silent and the chief electric vehicle officer Doug Field and they sat around for a good hour and they chit-chatted about things uh, 
I got a lot more respect for uh, Jim Farley. Not that I had any disrespect for him, um, but just listening to him talk, he gave Tesla credit where credit was due. He flat out said, Tesla is the EV leader in the world right now. He didn't start making claims that he's going to be number one in 20 minutes. Uh, he just said Tesla's number one, and he also threw out a lot of kudos to Sandy Monroe, uh, talking about Sandy Monroe's work and the things that he's done for the industry. So it was a it was a good video just listening to like some of the thought process going behind uh, the CEO's head. So I a ver very enjoyable video if you're if you like EVs, I would watch this. And and what impressed me is. First, that Jim Farley clearly is familiar with Sandy's work and has and has watched a number of his videos. That to me is important. That means you're actually engaged, as opposed to the former CEO of GM, Bob Lutz, who had never even seen a Tesla in person until after he had left the company. You're you're so di disengaged, you can't possibly know what's going on. And when he went to meet with Sandy. Rather than just show up and be like, hey, I'm a fan, he brought the people who can answer the hardest questions about not just the truck, but any electric vehicle, which yeah. I think shows a lot of respect and a lot of uh, understanding. So I think that was pretty, yeah. pretty impressive. Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, I just want to throw out to Tim Boakfield, who says I should use Adblock Plus. I do not use an ad blocker because I like to know when I'm uh, checking videos and making sure the ads are actually working. So I stopped blocking them some time ago. I used to. So Depp Press says Mary Barrow would do the same. Uh, I don't think she would. Because she has not in the past. She well, she's welcome that. to. So let's find yeah. out if she does. Because nobody else you know this is only the second automotive ceo sandy has sat down with on, on who's the other one elon at Starbucks. elon yeah did he not sit down with the arkimoto one guy um not on his own channel okay uh, arkimoto and, is one of his clients yeah but that's why i thought he would have i don't sat down i don't recall him. an interview with arkimoto okay um he did he do an interview with uh nicola when he went out there or just the just the general overview. <clears throat> uh, he did, he he did do a little sit down, but I don't believe it was with Mark Russell. I think it was with the engineers. Right, that's um, my memory. Yeah. And, oh, and, this this is an important one. I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is very important. Paul pointed out <laughs> that Mary led, and it matters. Yes. I don't. I don't know if we knew that. So that's. Super valuable. <laughs> and in the comments, yeah. someone did say that uh, they always see Chris Farley when they see Jim Farley, and they are, in fact, cousins. So that's why. Yes, and I, I see the same thing. I'm, I'm definitely on board with that. I do see Chris Farley, and I'm waiting for him to start busting out into a fat guy in a little coat or something like that. <laughs> but he, I mean, he, he's not fat, but it just... That, that's like the one thing I always think of uh, is Chris Farley singing that song because like whenever I get into my Ford Focus or I get into any one of my small cars, I'm always like, fat guy. You know? I'm always singing that to myself, which makes me think of Chris Farley, which then I go to Jim Jim Farley and then I go, oh, my Ford's over there. Yeah. Just Ford a playing weird... the long game on the marketing is what is what that sounds like. That's that's what it is. That's what In it a is. van down by the river is what Jeff points out. <laughs> uh Depress says when cameras are rolling CEOs are on their best behavior then why did Mary sit there and lie to us yeah just yeah. saying if that's Mary's best behavior I don't know man yeah and Tim says I should install another browser he's right I should well what I but... would say you should do is is have the ad blocker and just leave it disabled until it's showtime and then and then click it on and yeah, I should probably do something because I know you guys don't like watching my ads. Because I wonder if I, if I'm showing an ad, do they have to charge the the person putting up the ad? Like, they give them extra money? No. It's so weird that all of your ads are uh, for Grinder. What is that? 
<laughs> it's a coffee maker. Oh, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, and how do you take your coffee, Bear? <laughs> oh. Ah, black with a little cream. <laughs> Very strong. Very strong. Yeah. All right. Wow. That just totally devolved <sighs> really quick. Yeah. So hello to everyone uh, in the chat, by the way. Thank you for being here. Mark and Paul and David and who is this and John and, of course, Tech Fixer. We got to chat again. And Mark. Mm -hmm. Jim Farley's best behavior is pretty good, Mark says, and I would absolutely agree. <clears throat> I'd say he presents himself uh, in a very CEO-like manner. Total opposite of Chris Farley, who... <laughs> <laughs> that would have been that would have been a good movie oh uh, yeah um i mean remember the whole movie with chris farley trying to he was making automotive parts yeah big tom callahan's uh, boy yeah a lot yeah. of paint chips yeah what do you mean i may um, have seen that movie a hundred times yeah tommy boy yeah uh highly recommend it um my charge Tesla wants to know if we are buying Ford stock or do they, or do we think that they fail to catch up? Um, I will be straight straight up and say I do own uh, some Ford stock. I'm I not do gonna... not. Yeah. I so. do not. But maybe that will change after watching this video. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I. <sighs> I'm just not good at picking individual stocks unless I know an absolute ton about the company. It's fair enough, it, and it's hard to because you still don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, even even then, you're just getting a more educated guess. Yeah, which still could be total horseshit. So you know who I would like to thank more than Mary? Uh, Mary's parents. <laughs> My patrons who get early <laughs> access, bonus content, uh, all kinds of good stuff, and help keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month cannot do it without you guys thank you so much yeah and my patrons as everybody knows are much better than brian's patrons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. unless they're on both channels then they are uh, i don't know super patreons yeah but not uh so i want to thank all my patreons uh i'm not doing any live streams of the of the factory sites this week uh we're going to be doing live streams of the earnings reports from nicola and lucid but Brian, you must have something coming. Yeah, I've always stream. got my Friday live stream coming up. Uh, that should be fun. This week for my um, cathode building production tracker, I don't think I'm making one because the only things they've done are things that aren't on the tracker. There haven't been any new walls or roof or anything. They've just been pouring floors, which doesn't count on its own. <clears throat> so I may not make that this week. Yeah, well, there's some plumbing going in. You got that on your little tracker? No, I only count interior work as underway once walls are in place. Yeah, you should call it the catheter tracker. It kind of rhymes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we'll see what kind of ads start showing up on those videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. Just, a, just an idea. You know, a little clickbaity, I think, but not for the right people. Right? And not for the right reasons. All right. Oh. So, uh, you guys, uh, we want to thank everyone for being here. We do this every Tuesday at 4 p.m. And we will be back next Tuesday to do it again. Yeah, and we simulcast live on both A Bear's Workshop and uh, My Tesla Live, the second channel of My Tesla Weekend. Bear, thank you for hanging out. It's always a pleasure. Oh, uh, thank you for for lying in front of everybody. <laughs> I know as soon as we uh, we go off, you're going to tell me how horrible I did. Oh, yeah. And I, and I swore, and I got to stop talking about Chris Farley because it's not about him. But, hey, I appreciate you being here. Uh, always a good conversation with you. Yeah. And the people in the chat. Yeah, Thank we you, got, everyone, for being we there. We got easily the smartest demographic on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I've, I've been in live chats on... <sighs> on other channels and it's i think they 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 did just beat out the makeup channels you know <laughs> that's that's what this is all right well thanks Barry. for the record i'm not wearing makeup 
Okay. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> and we'll see you next uh, Tuesday at 4 o'clock. All right. Thank you, everyone.